Hey guys, occasionally disaster does strike. Here's your typical hard drive. When it comes to these things, it's not if they're gonna fail, it's when they're gonna fail. Fortunately, if your data is stored on an Unraid server, you've got the ability to recover from any single drive failure. So, it happened to me, a drive went out, Let's show you how we recover from that failure and how you can rebuild your Unraid server. I'll also talk about some of the dangers to uh, having only a single drive redundancy and why you still need backups. But let's go ahead and show you how to do this. So if this ever does happen to you, you don't need to panic. This is an easy fix. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about our high level steps first. The first thing you want to do when a drive fails is obtain a replacement drive. Ideally, it'd be nice if you had one on hand, but if you don't, you're going to need to go out and get one. Keep in mind that while your drive has failed, you can still access that data on your Unraid server, but you have absolutely no protection at this point, okay? Another drive fails, some data is going to be lost. So once you obtain that replacement drive, you're going to want to go ahead and mount it into the Unraid server. Just like you would any other drive, you can either replace the drive that's there uh, in the same slot or put it in an additional slot. Once your drive's mounted, you're going to want to go through and run a pre-clear on the drive. I've got another video on this uh, look for my video on adding a new drive to a server. It's the same process. That pre-clear is going to take a few hours, so make sure you uh, understand that. Um, once the pre-clear has completed, you're going to go ahead and assign the drive to a slot of the failed drive. And the, the next part of the video is going to show you how to do that and what to watch out for, because you are replacing a drive. You're not inserting a new drive here. And then lastly, after you've done the first four steps, you're going to go ahead and start your array which will begin your rebuild process. Now you need to understand some of the dangers of this process. First, Unraid absolutely can recover 100% of your data from a single drive failure. That's the whole point of having a parity drive. That's the whole point of having an Unraid server is that if any single drive fails, you can rebuild or replace that data that's gone without necessarily uh, having to go to your backup. Okay, however, once a drive fails, whether it's your parity drive or any one of the drives in your array, you're no longer protected. What that means is if an additional drive fails, you're going to lose data on that additional drive because there's not enough information to recover or to recover more than one drive. However, unlike a normal RAID array, uh, you're still not going to lose all your data because the files are stored individually on various drives. So you can still mount the drives into uh, into another server or even just access it through uh, Unraid itself and pull that information off of those drives so you'd only lose whatever drive actually failed. Um, and that goes true also once you replace the drive and you go through your pre-clear process and you put in the replacement drive uh, you're gonna have access to the files that used to be on the previous drive and we're gonna show you that in the video as well however you're still you still have an unprotected array meaning during that rebuild process, if another drive fails, you're going to lose some data. So, short version of all that. Don't panic, but just realize you have some, ex some potential theoretical exposure to data loss at this point. And that kind of drives home the point that you should always have a good backup of your essential data. And when I say essential data, I mean data that you can't recover. So, family photos, documents, tax forms, um, things like that. If you've got a bunch of ripped movies using for a media server, chances are you could replace them if it failed. So that's usually not the end of the world. Um, and typically that's your larger file. So you don't need to back up, you know, 20 terabytes of data. You probably just need to back up a few hundred megabytes uh, of your essential data. But your backup strategy is going to be up to you and what's important to you and what you feel like recovering if you need to. So just a few tips before we get started. Um, first, if possible, always have an extra ready disk prepared for disaster. So, um, if have another drive laying around, preferably as big as the largest drive in your array. Uh, so have it handy so you don't have to go running to the store or wait two days for mail order delivery. Um, if you do have that disk, the other thing you may or probably should do is go ahead and run a pre-clear on it. Even if you're not going to leave it in a server, run a pre-clear, get that out of the way, put it aside in case you ever need it. That'll save you multiple hours in the event of a disaster uh, or a drive failure. Uh, and then lastly, always have a good backup of your essential data. And 
you know, to be honest, you should probably have one off-site as well, meaning put it in somebody else's house, your parents' house, your brother's house, safe deposit box at a bank, something. I know it's not convenient, um, but if your house burns down, you'll be happy about it. The other option is if you trust cloud services, uh, you can go and use just things like Crash Plan and probably a million other places for that. Or if you have an Office 365 subscription, you probably have one terabyte of uh, uh, OneDrive storage. You can copy at least some essential data up there. Anyway, and lastly, um, if you feel ambitious, it's probably not a bad idea to do a practice run of a rebuild at least once so you know the process. And I'm about to walk you through that process. Uh, so you'll be able to see it and then if you if you have an extra drive and you want to go through and do a, a practice run uh, Then when disaster actually does happen, you'll be ready to go with this. So I've done enough talking and showing you slides Let's go ahead and get started with this process What I'm going to show you here is how do you replace a drive that goes bad within your uh, Unrate server So in this case here as you can see I've got my disk 4 which is missing and I've actually unmounted it right now um, That drives effectively gone so uh, in this case the drive had a failure i pulled it out um, and you're still safe because you got the parity drive and unraid does have the ability to rebuild this drive but now keep in mind you're in a very dangerous position right now because if another drive fails you will lose data on at least one of your drives now unlike a traditional raid server you won't lose all of your data because uh, the way it's written to disks is you can still recover it data off individual disks. That data doesn't go away. So that's kind of nice. But right now we haven't, even though this drive is completely gone, we can still reconstruct the data that's on that drive, which is kind of nice. Now I've got another drive down here, which is unassigned. And this is one that I had as a kind of a standby drive, one that I was keeping around in case of a situation like this where a drive goes bad. And if you actually think about it, you have a drive laying around, it's a good idea to mount it and do a pre-clear on it. I've already done the pre-clear on this drive. So this drive is ready to go. You can see here it says pre-cleared. Uh, let's try it again. It says pre-cleared. And that's a good thing. That means that's probably about eight or nine hours that you don't have to run the pre-clear process on. And it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and you can see here no device. And it's saying it's missing this device here, which is a, a Seagate drive that I had mounted in that position. Um, so I'm going to pull this down. And I've got two devices I can choose from at this point. I've got my, my brand new HGST, um, which is a 4 terabyte drive, which I've had very good luck with them. Um, I've got another one mounted here, another one mounted here. And I've also got this... Uh, this is actually an external USB device, which I just used to copy things to and from the server. That's another video. Um, but I'm going to want to use this drive here. Now, ironically, when I, I just told you I had good luck with these HGST drives. And I've never had this happen before, but when I picked up one here to actually put into this server, I went to mount it and it didn't work at all. Um, I've never had a drive come out of the box bad. But I went and first I thought it was the cable, then I thought it was maybe the power cable. So I tried switching everything. I could not get that drive to mount or do anything. Um, turns out it was defective. So I went back to the store and exchange. It's one of the times I was actually quite happy I bought local, even though they also had a better price than Amazon over at uh, Fry's. But I'm going to go ahead and select this drive here. And you're going to see here it says wrong. Okay. It says it's looking for this drive, and now you're trying to mount this drive, and it's just saying it's wrong. Okay. So... This is one of those cases where Unraid really, um, the information it gives you doesn't help you a lot. Yeah, it's wrong. We know it's wrong. But it doesn't tell you that that's, that's okay. So if you go down here, it says, if you scroll down to the bottom under Array Operation, it says Stopped, Replacement Disk Installed. Okay? So then you go over, and you can't start this. See, the Start button's not enabled. But if you go over here, it says Stopped. Start will start parity sync and or data rebuild. So in other words, when I start this array, it's going to say, okay, it's wrong, but we're going to assume this is a new drive and and he's empty. But he's also replacing what was on my disk four. So what it's going to do is it's going to initiate a rebuild from the parity disk and from the rest of the uh, information it's got and replace the data that's on that drive. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm starting my array, and you'll see uh, it's going to go through the normal array start process. Mounting disks. 
It will take a little bit longer than it would normally because in this case here, um, it's not a normal operation. This is what we, I guess in the airline industry, they call it an irregular operation. We're trying to do some, uh, we're trying to do some recovery here. We realize things aren't normal. There's different things that has to happen. So starting services. And the neat thing about Unraid is even though this drive is missing and it's empty, and we got to rebuild the information. Um, and you can see here, it's now mounted that as, as my disc four. Um, if I highlight over, you can see here, green, normal operation, normal operation, normal operation. I get down here and it's orange, which indicates there's something different about it. This orange triangle. And you'll see here, it says device contents emulated. Now what that means is, <coughs> even though that disc does not hold any actual data right now, we're actually rebuilding it. And if you look at the bottom here, it'll say parity sync data rebuild 0%. It's going to take a while, but it's rebuilding that drive. But nonetheless, all the information that you once had on this disk, um, you can still access. That's kind of like magical, isn't it? So the drive's empty, but it it's going to act like all the data is still on that drive. So anything you had on there, you can still access during this rebuild process. So you, right now, you're 100% up and running and operational. Uh, you can read data from this. You can... If you're using it as a media server, you can go play movies off of it. It'll work just fine. Uh, you're just going to have to wait for the rebuild. And again, like I said earlier, um, the biggest concern at this point is you don't want to lose another disk until this one's done being rebuilt. Because if you do, you're going to at least have to go to your backup for to restore at least some of your data. Okay? So that's really about it. It's that easy to replace a drive uh, within your Unraid server. And that goes for not only any of the drives within your array, it also goes with if your parity disk went bad, you can replace your parity disk exactly the same way. The main difference being instead of rebuilding the contents, it would rebuild all your parity. And I'll show you how this goes through the process. So we'll come back and uh, show you the rest of it. So here we are now, just about an hour and a half, two hours into the rebuild process. And if you look down here at the bottom, we're at about 18% completed. Um, so it gives you an idea about how long it takes. And you know, I'll resume the video when it's done. But just to show you, I've been actually using this server, I've been saving things to it, I've been reading things from it, and it works just fine, even though disk 4 is still in an emulated mode. And if I go over here and check out the files on disk 4, you can see that all of my files are still there. So I can go into my YouTube videos folder, and this is just what's happened, or this is just what's on disk 4. Obviously with Unraid, files can be on any drive, and often are. Um, so it gives you a general idea here, everything works just fine. And I'm going to let the rebuild process continue. Talk to you all in a little bit. Okay, so what you're seeing here is after the drive got finished rebuilding, see so normal operation, device is active, parity is valid. So once again, my system's been restored. All the data on that fourth drive is back. And my array is once again protected. In other words, if I lose another drive at this point, I can also rebuild it. So just remember that it's during that period of rebuild that you're at your most exposure for data loss. But again, you should have another backup anyway. So I hope you like this video, and I hope this helps you out. This is Mike. Take care. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd be honored if you go ahead and click the like button. I'd be even more honored if you go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, that other button works as well. In addition, I'm open to suggestions as to what do you want to see, how are you using your Unraid server, um, or any other tech topic. In fact, uh, I get a lot of enjoyment out of making these videos. I'd love to know what you'd like to see, and I'll go ahead and make that. Uh, once again, thanks for watching this, and I'll see you next time. Take care.